Hey, good deal. Good afternoon. Uh, thank y'all for being here. Kind of wrap up Baylor first. Um, kind of three phase. Uh, good win. Uh, quality win. Thought we did some good things in all three phases. Uh, start with special teams. I thought we did a nice job with our coverage units. Um, on punt team, they had one. I think we punted three times. They had one yard. Uh, our gunners, Sam James and uh, Ruffin, they did a tremendous job covering those. And then kickoff wise, uh, under some difficult circumstances, Parker missed a couple kicks, left them out in the middle of the field. But I thought our kickoff team, especially late there in the fourth quarter, two different times, did a great job in coverage. Um, guys that stuck out, stood out, Lance Dixon, Hershey McLaurin, did a really nice job um, on those coverage units. And then the kickoff return was big and it set up the last drive. Um, we got out to the 33 or 34 yard line. And um, that was the first time, you know, we hadn't had very many opportunities on kickoff return, but I thought the guys did a nice job blocking and Jeremiah hit it. Um, and our field goal protection was solid all, all night. And then the field goal block by Dante uh, was obviously big. It was a momentum changer for sure. Um, defensively, um, I think obviously we have to cover better. You know, we, we gave up a bunch of yards passing. Uh, so we have to do a better job. We have to figure out ways to get pressure on the quarterback. We got to him twice. We need to do a better job with that. Um, but, you know, three takeaways, scored nine points on defense. And then I think the last four possessions of the game. Um, and there's five possessions where I thought defensively we really had an impact on the game outside of of the points. Is last drive before half was big. Um, you know, we didn't do a very good job offensively. We had to punt the ball back to them. And we did a really nice job defensively not giving up points there. But then the last four possessions of the game, we went, um, I think it was turnover, um, turnover, field goal, and then the game, the clock ran out. So, really strong finish defensively. And then offensively, we thought we were balanced. 217 yards rushing um, was big. And we're really good on third down. And, it, and I thought that our receivers as a whole made a, a bunch of contested catches. And, and we did a good job in our protection. They, they sent a bunch of different pressures. And, and I thought offensive line-wise and our backs and our tight ends who've been helpful in that as well did a nice job in protection. Um, our uh, – well, I was going to announce our award winners. I'll do that um, here in a second. Um, come when we go grab that off my desk. I think I left it right there. Make sure here. I know who they are off my head, so um, – but I want to make sure I get the scout team guys um, some publicity too. So, award winners, first of all, Casey Legg um, and Tony Mathis, both recognized by the Big 12. Casey obviously had the game winner. And it was two for two there and has done a really solid job for us all year from a field goal perspective. And then Tony Mathis had 22 rushes, 167 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, really nice job by him. And I think it says a lot to, you know, he's just – he's been consistent and he was patient and, and had a big night and came through you know, on a big stage on Thursday night. And then our in-house awards, uh, first of all, start with our offensive lineman of the week. And, and he just – I thought he played at a really high level against one of the best players in our league. Um, Zach Frazier, great out 97%. Um, ID'd the fronts and, and just did a really, really good job there. Um, our special teams player of the week um, was Dante Stills. And I thought – and talked about the block extra point. I thought that was huge. It led – to a two-point uh, conversion. And I just thought it changed the momentum. And it got it to 37-33. And we scored the very next possession to get to the three-point lead. And I just thought that was huge. And uh, he, he he did a did a nice job with the block there. And, and had a chance with a couple of other ones, really. Um, and then defensively, um, had two fumble recoveries, returned one for a touchdown, had a few tackles as well. Jasir Cox played his best game here. Um, Really showed some will kind of hanging on to that ball on the second fumble recovery. Um, offense player of the week was Caden Prather, who had nine catches for, if my memory serves me correct, 108 yards and a touchdown. Um, and, and several of those contested catches. Thank you. Several of those contested catches. Um, and, and one, and I thought he's played well since really game one. Um, and then 
our juice award, we always give the best on the sideline. I thought our guys on the sideline were tremendous, but Hammond Russell, who's been sick, who's just now coming back, practiced last week. Um, and then the blue collar award, we give those, if you'll remember, we kind of give those uh, to guys that, that maybe didn't show up in the stat sheet as much, but that, that were really essential to our wins. And those are Jordan Jefferson. Uh, I thought he really controlled uh, the inner part uh, of the line there uh, defensively and, and really took up two guys and uh, held up. Wyatt Milam played his best game of the year at left tackle for us. Um, and then Brian Palinde has really been a good acquisition for us uh, through the portal. Um, and, and I thought he blocked really, really well. Scout team players of the week, and, and I appreciate Coleman grabbing this for me. Uh, offensively goes to our center, uh, Jackson Oxley. Uh, scout defensive player goes to Gene Townsville, who's a who's a, a walk-on freshman linebacker who's done a really good job. He's going to be a good special teams player for us. And our scout special teams player is University High's own Donald Brandle, who's done a, a really good job both on defense and on special teams from a scout's perspective. So those are our, our awards for the Baylor game. Moving on to uh, to Texas Tech. They come in 3-3. Three and three. They played an extremely tough schedule as well. Um uh, Joey McGuire, I've known him for a long time, going back to when he was head coach at Cedar Hill. Uh, did a, f- a phenomenal job there at Cedar Hill, turning that to a state championship program in the Metroplex there. And then was with ba- both Matt Rule and Dave Aranda at Baylor. And he's put together a really good staff. Um, offensively, uh, what sticks, uh, Coach Kitley, who's kind of uh, from from Cliff Kingsbury's um, – kind of coaching tree they play really fast I think they've had over 100 plays three times this year um they've played three quarterbacks I think all three of them are really good um and then a lot of good skill I think they they play eight receivers all of them have uh multiple catches uh the two running backs have both hurt us in the past and and they do a nice job there and they run a lot of plays they've been they've been somewhat balanced um but they they spread you out and, and, and cause some difficulties with how they how they get in and out of their stuff and, and a lot of new stuff each and every week. Okay, not a they're they're really hard to to schematically uh, get ready for on 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 the defensive end. We're talking about their defense, their defense coordinator is Tim DeRuiter. He's been around for a long time. Um, in in kind of his past and and currently they send a lot of pressure, uh, multiple fronts. Um, I think for for us it starts with their D line. You know, a lot of a lot of respect for those guys. They've played well against us um, in in the past. And then Hutchings kid number ninety five, number ninety seven, Bradford Jr. Both those guys have played well interior in, in, on the interior part. And then nineteen Tyree Wilson is he's six six two seventy five. Um, he he's been a load. He affects balls with his length. He's done a really good job pressuring the passer. Um, and then Merriweather, their linebacker, seems like he's been there for a long time. He's he's made a bunch of plays in the past, and he's doing a good job this year. And then really long in the secondary, going to going to play a lot of man coverage and challenge you. Special teams wise, um, special teams coordinator, uh, another long time uh, head high school coach there in Texas uh, at Arlington Bowie, and then he was most recently at SMU, and they did a really good job um, blocking kicks and punts when when they were at SMU. And and he's 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 already affected two punts this year at, at Tech. So um, their punter McNamara is really good. If you remember a couple of years ago, we went out there. He was probably the MVP of the game uh, and and hit some bombs. Uh, the kicker Wolf it does a really good job. High touchback percentage. And then Price and White, two of their better offensive skill players, are the returners. So um, they're going to challenge us in all three phases. So um, heading out to Lubbock, um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be warm. We got to get ready for the weather. Uh, probably be windy and. Uh, and so, um, it's a tough environment, and, and it'll be a, a really a, a great environment for, environment for college football there on Saturday afternoon, and kind of starting a stretch run here. So, looking forward to it. So, questions, Greg? Nice to have you back. Open us up. Thank you. Start with injuries. Obviously, your secondary was pretty beat up by the end of the game. Where are you? So, um, McCormick um, probably questionable. We'll see. Uh, how he goes. Um, we're going to practice Charles Woods some today and kind of know more. Um, hopeful, I, I wouldn't say any more than that yet. We're going to practice him a little bit. If he does play, it'll be a, in a reduced role. By no means will it be in every day, every every play. Um, let's see. Lamp has to sit out the first half. Uh, we appealed that. 
targeting, but it was upheld, so he'll have to sit out the first half. Um, we we expect uh, Rashad Ajayi to be back. Uh, anybody else in particular? CJ. CJ will uh, practice today, and if everything checks out, then he'll be he'll be free. Um, I mean, he'll be ready to go. Michael Laughlin, uh, unfortunately, out for the year. Uh, will have surgery um, this week on on a on a knee, and so he'll be he'll be out for the year, and and really uh, hurt for him. And that's why I was kind of I appreciate y'all giving me some little time on that. You know, out of respect to him, that's a it's a tough deal. It's the third time now, and and so. Um, feel for him. He was playing at a high level, so he'll be out. Anybody else that you'll have that you that you want to know about? White. Jordan White will be back, and uh, um, yeah, he he's practiced, and I think he'll see he'll see action this week. Sean Martin, Sean Martin no more no, probably after today and tomorrow. Um, I would put him in the you know hopeful to questionable deal kind of. He's gonna he'll practice in a limited basis today and kind of know more. Um, when we do the radio show on Thursday, should should know for sure. I noticed something. I don't know whether this is an oddity, a coincidence, or what. But this is the third time you faced them with them coming off a bye. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> how do you how do you I, factor I that or know. reconcile? That? I don't. I mean, I don't know. Um, I was thinking about that as you get kind of get ready for them. I had a little bit more time Friday and Saturday. Um, but I was thinking about that, and you kind of go back and you think through kind of the games just as you prepare coaching-wise and kind of going back and looking through my notes the last couple of years. And, you know, I did. I noticed that too. Um, I, I can't I can't really – I don't know. I can't it, – it, it, you're correct, though. It is. It's the third time in four years we've played them off a of, off of bye week, them coming off a of bye week. One other thing, um, I noticed on their um, their depth chart they list a star. Is the system similar to Baylor? Is there any carryover there to what uh, you faced on Thursday with what they're going to do defensively? Yeah, you know, I think you know Joey being in part of that staff and, and in those defensive room in that defensive room, I think there probably is some. And I, and, and Joey's background is um, is on the defensive side too. So there are there are, there's some carryover for sure. Um, they're built different. You know they're they're built different, and how do they get their pressures is different. Uh, you know, so probably more different than similar, but but there definitely are some things you see on film, and you're like, okay, yeah. You're, you're not the first coach who's, who's kind of said that part about how they change their offense from week to week, and the season's not that old, so it must be apparent. Um, that seems unusual because teams just kind of do what they do, and maybe small changes, but mm -hmm. regular changes it seems like. Yeah, that. and that's kind of. Uh, yeah, they they did that, you know, studying him at this summer, just watching what he did at at Western Kentucky, and and so no no this first time we've gone against Coach Kidley, known of him, known his dad. His dad's kind of a legend at Texas Tech. He's a long time uh, track and field coach there, and really made them a national nationally prominent. Um, several Olympians and um, competing for national championships out there in track. Um, his dad's done a done a heck of a job, and he was at Abilene before, but. Um, but just studying them this summer, that's what really stood out to me um, is different week to week. Not a whole bunch of uh, carryover um, in my eyes as I watch them. And so uh, they, it makes it tough to prepare for, you know. And what you try to do is you really just kind of prepare for the tempo. That's the hardest piece of how fast they're playing. So you do that. Um and then and try to get your guys in position, you know, run, both in the run game and the pass game, to to keep the ball in front of it and get them down. Neil, you talked a lot about the improvement in the offensive line, but you've also hinted you thought they could take another step. How, how so? Where, where could they still improve? Yeah, they can get. I think the everybody get better. My my thought going into the year was is we got to be able to run the ball versus good people, um, and I think against teams that are good versus a run. And, you know, Pitt is good versus the run. We were able to run the ball versus them. I haven't kept up with them since. I don't know how they're performing. Um, Baylor is really good versus the run. We were able to run the ball versus them. You know, Coach Pry traditionally has been good versus the run when he was at Penn State. Um, I don't – again, I don't, they, they were good going into our game. I can't speak for how they've been after our game. Um, the Really the only game where we have not performed as well as we would want to from a run game perspective perspective is versus Texas 
you know, and credit to our guys. They answered. We challenged them, you know. Um, myself, Coach Moore, we really challenged our, our O-line. And, you know, I thought they answered the bell versus, versus Baylor. But for us to be successful or for us to play offense at a high level, we got to lean on those guys. They've got to be the strength and they've got to be the consistency – you know, not on, not just offensively, but for us as a football team, that we've got to know what we're getting out of them each week. Coach, you were talking about the play Dante made on the mm -hmm. field goal block, but then also mentioned that you got to find a way to get more pressure on the quarterback. I mean, obviously he plays a part in that too. But uh, are you seeing teams, uh, uh, you know, scheming him any differently this year than, than in years past? And and with the position he plays. Um, I mean, there's not really a lot. I mean, it's not like you can stand him up and, yeah. and you know, so I mean, there's only so much you can do. So, like, you know, what are you seeing there with, with how teams are, 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 are handling him and, and, you know, how do you try to counter that, I guess? Yeah, it started with Kansas. Kansas had a nice plan. Kansas kind of checked some runs away from him, you know, um, and then they read him, you know, in the run game, which was – they did a nice job. Um, and then then the teams have slid their protection to him. You know, so he's getting, you know, both inside and outside help for whoever he's going against. Uh, so that's that's something they've done. We've countered that with moving him around. You know, he's playing a lot more on the edge. He's playing a lot more end um, here recently than he has maybe uh, earlier in his career. We, we basically he's played all four positions on the front. Um, so we're trying to counter that. And he's played, you know, and y'all have heard me say this, and there's been a lot of growth within him. You know, um, I don't even know what his stats are. I know he just – did he tie or break the record, Monty, for T – yeah, tied the record for TFLs. Um, and so, you know, statistically he's still showing up, but he's making a lot more plays um, than he's made in the past. And so even sometimes, like, if he's getting doubled, other people are getting singled, and that's where we got to get some more production, you know. And, and the other thing, too, is, like, when you start dropping – you know, like when you start dropping more people, it's hard. You know, when you're only rushing three sometimes, it's hard to get pressure, you know. So, um, sometimes we're we're given a little bit, you know, in a pass rush to drop some more people in coverage, you know. So, I think there's a little give and take there. I mentioned Frazier. Um, how much did he go up head-to-head -head against their nose? Did yeah, it went a good bit. Good yeah, a good bit. Yeah, he, he did. Um, I thought that was a solid matchup, you know. And and I thought that uh, – I thought Zach performed well in that one-on-one. -on -one. Do you have a common opponent with two different polarizing results, Texas Tech with a big upset over Texas, and then you guys struggling? Is that something you're going to look to, to try to see maybe differences or scheming um, Texas Tech in this game? Yeah, not really. Not really. They, uh, you know, they played well um, against Texas, especially in the second half. I thought they played really well. Um, Texas played really well against us in the first half. Um but, I mean, you watch the game, you know, it's definitely something we're paying attention to. But how we measure up, no. There's so many There's so many outside determining factors on, you know, you know, why did Texas play better at home, you know, instead of on the road? Why did – you know, there's just a lot of – they played They played well against Texas. They won. We didn't. You mentioned uh, CJ kind of working him back in. Obviously, Tony's coming off the, mm -hmm. the big game. Anything there uh, strategy-wise as far as, you know, let's maybe ease C.J. back into it or maybe, we'll, you know, we don't. <laughs> I think a lot of it will be, you know, he hasn't he hasn't put on shoulder pads. You know, he really hasn't. We put a helmet on him just so he get used to it. But he hasn't had any contact and he hasn't practiced with a team since the Texas game. You know, so that's been a, you know, so there's going to be a little rust there. And so a lot of it will depend – how we use him on Saturday will depend on how he does Tuesday and Wednesday. You know, um, we purposely waited, you know. Um, he he could have got through the concussion protocol quicker. Um, we I just didn't feel like how that played out on that Saturday night down in Austin, I just – I didn't think it was the right thing to do. We were in a hurry. We got depth at the position. Um, I thought it made more sense, you know, on our medical team, thought it made more sense just to wait. And so uh, he'll practice today, practice tomorrow, um, and in how he performs will will depend on how, how much we use him. You know, you could game plan a bunch of different things to take away, like, a strength on offense, right? Mm -hmm. Anything you can do about tempo? It's not a 
play you're stopping or yeah. scheme or anything. Yeah, I think the the thing is is how you practice, and and that's what where we spend a lot of time is. Um, we're going to do some things differently because uh, we've had some issues with tempo in the past. You know, it's it's been something that's affected us. You know, so. Um, you, know, you can't continue to do the same things and expect different results. So, so we're going to definitely do some things differently on Tuesday and Wednesday, or today and tomorrow, on how we practice um, and how we prepare our guys. And then um, we're going to do some things within the within the game plan, within our structure of our defense, um, where there's not as much movement from side to side. Is there anything you can do to prepare for the wind? I know you know it out there. It, it can be – Those spirals, that's the biggest deal, man. Like, seriously, and, and I don't mean that kidding at all. Um, if, if – you know, the wind's going to affect the kicking game some, punting and kicking, but it shouldn't affect anything you do on offense if you throw spirals. You know, if you don't, if you don't throw a spiral, it'll affect you. But if you throw spirals, um, you know, like – and I spent three years out in Lubbock, but the worst wind I've ever been in is that wind at Virginia Tech <laughs> in a game scenario. I'm not saying the worst. I've, that, that, let me slide that back. The worst football wind that we've been in is that wind at, at Virginia Tech um, because it was so odd. You know, like it'll be it'll be windy in West Texas. You know, like it's uh that's kind of what it is, but it won't won't have any greater effect on the game other than punting and kicking. You know, we just got to make sure we throw spirals, you know, which, you know, the two quarterbacks that we've used primarily, they both throw a really tight ball. Coach, oh, go ahead, Bob. As, oh. as the way the secondary has worked out, uh, mm-hmm. which is injury after injury, yeah. suspension, et cetera, you feel kind of like a guy, an old pickup truck and trying to patch tires <laughs> yeah. over and over. You know, it's uh, – you know, it's it's one of those things. It seems like it's kind of different positions each year. You know, I think that um, we're not the only team that's going through this. And I think as, as we're in this kind of new era of college football where um, your roster is going to be changing a lot, right? You're, you know, and, and I think that's just kind of the way it is where a lot of times your twos, your projected twos try to leave and go to, go to greener pastures, they think. Um, and so you're a little bit thinner. Um, and then your young, really young players are going to be your backups. And so when you do experience some injuries, it's a bigger issue than maybe it was three, four, five years ago um, in college football. So, um, and I think that's kind of where we've been. You know, the, uh, the, the one positive, if we're going to put a positive swing on it, Bob, would be that guys have experience. So it's not going to be the first time they played. You know, they, they've got some game experience. Um, but we'll figure it out. I think from a coaching perspective, what we've got to do is um, by tomorrow figure out who's going to play, like who's healthy enough to play in the game, and then how do we give them the best chance to be successful. You know, we're not going to go throw, we're not gonna go out and pitch a shutout. You know, I'd love to. We're not going to pitch a shutout in this game. You know, um, they're, they're going to get some passing yards. When you throw the ball 50 and 60 times, you're going to give up some passing yards. What we've got to do a better job of is we've got to do a better job keeping the ball in front and then getting them down when they catch it. That's We did not do a very good job of that. We've got to do a better job in our pursuit angles once the ball is caught, which we did not do a very good job of. And then we've got to make some plays on the ball, which Aubrey did the other night. We've got to make some plays on the football. And so – that's that's for us, coaches wise. Figure out who's healthy enough to play. Put them in the position where they can be the most successful, and then and then work on pursuit, tackling, and, and making plays on the ball. Kind of the system and the tempo the Texas yeah. Tech plays. And to me, it's kind of fascinating in the sense that you know they start off the year with Shao or Show, with mm-hmm. quarterback. I'm going to try to pronounce his name. Uh, Donovan Smith comes in. You know he's played before, so they both go out. So they bring in their third guy, and they they still throw it 62 times with, with the third guy. Now, I don't know how many coaches are going to let their third-string quarterback throw 62 times in, in a game. But, I mean, is there some level of fascination to that, or is that just simply the Texas Tech? Yeah, I think, that, well, I, mean, I think that, first of all, I think all three of those kids are good players. You know, like Show was successful at Oregon um, before he transferred to Tech. Um, fortunately, he's got hurt both years at Tech. Um Played well early in the year last year, and he played well in the first game this year. Um, and so he's a proven commodity. Donovan Smith played well at the, la- at the end of last year. Now, he, he beat Iowa State, a really good Iowa State team. 
had a chance to beat Baylor in the last regular season game and then beat Mississippi State very handedly in a bowl game. You know, so he played really well, and he's continued that. You know, he beats Texas as a starter. And then the West Texas kid that came in and played against Oklahoma State, you know, he was one – I think if I read this right, he's the highest rated quarterback recruit um, in the history of, uh, out there. Um, and, and he played well, you know. So, all three of those kids can play. You know, our guys haven't been tested as much, but we have similar – you know, we, we think that our, our quarterback room is really talented too. You know, JT's won the job and, and he's played at a high level, but we have a lot of faith in those guys too. And so a lot of it is if you feel good about your – you just – you plug them in. And and you have faith and, the, and their teammates have faith and you just kind of run run what you normally do. Um, and, I, and I think that's kind of the approach they've taken. You know, they probably – my assumption, not knowing how they practice, but my assumption is – is they got they knew they had three really good quarterbacks. They probably worked in in fall camp to get all three of them reps, and last spring to get all three of them reps. So the other guys on the team were like, I, you know, it, when when you have good people, you don't really know who's throwing you the ball. And so that's my assumption is they got them reps, and the team kind of grew and oh, we got some guys that can play. And then they've kind of been rolling since. The, the Morton kid, I mean, he's, he's he's a runner too, right? Yeah, all three of them have the ability to run. Yeah, they all three have the ability to run. Donovan Smith is a bigger – he's bigger, but all three of them can run, and they'll call run plays for all three of them. So the offense doesn't change with either, any of those guys? No, they really haven't. No, maybe a little bit more called runs with Donovan uh, Smith and short yardage because he's so big. Um, but they really, from a, how they call it, run pass, all that kind of stuff has been the same, which they might. Uh, ben Wahad? So he's going to practice. He's going to practice. Uh, he practiced Sunday. Um, he was out. He got rolled up during the bye week. And he did not play um, last week. Nothing serious, but he wasn't at 100%. percent what fair to put him in that situation versus those guys. Um, he practiced Sunday, and and our hope is that he'll he'll be available. Yes. How, how dangerous are stat sheets? Like for example, when you look at think about a ton of sacks in TFLs, and you can probably look at different things on their defense. But do you, do you see numbers like that and try to attack it? accentuate it or is it dangerous maybe to, to go maybe what you're not especially comfortable doing or used to doing and all of a sudden you create a trap that you fall into yeah I think you got to be really careful you know I think that's the you fall into that trap too where you know you watch some teams on video and maybe your strengths don't necessarily match up with their strengths right but they had some success versus uh, an opponent so I think you got to be judicious in how, in how you go about that right um, they have given up some sacks. They have given up some TFLs. They've also had some explosive plays, you know. And and a lot of times when when you're going to attempt to make an explosive play, create an explosive play, there's a protection issue there, you know. And it, it, you got to hold on the ball a little bit longer, right? So in most offensive situations, you're kind of you kind of know that, and that's a weighted risk that you're willing to take. Understand that you could have a negative play, but you also the risk is worth the reward of getting a touchdown or an explosive. And so I think I think you can't read too much into that. Um, and I think that that we have traditionally been pretty good at TFLs and sacks. It's really kind of where our thought process on how we structure our defense is really based on. So that's something that we've done a good job of. Um, not only we our, our numbers are pretty decent this year, but in the past we've been really good at it. Um, so that's something that we'll definitely – we're going to move our front just like we do every week. You know, we're going to try to do some simulated pressures, which we do every week, uh, to try to do that. Um, but you got you can't sell out to that because they are so explosive. Coach, um, obviously the way rosters are built and maintained are completely mm-hmm. different now than, you know, five, ten years ago with the portal and stuff. Um, you know, I've kind of been listening to, you know, the way you're talking about, you know, the defense has to get better this year. Yeah. And I'm thinking that, you know, you're probably saying the same stuff about the offense last year. So I, I guess what my question is, is in today's day and age, how do you find the consistency on both sides of the yeah. ball at the same time? I mean, is there dumb luck involved? Well, I think I just – no, I think you got to – there's ways to do it, you know, and some people have done it better. But there's definitely ways to do it, you know. Last year, uh, for us, there was some patience involved with the O-line. Like, I knew we were getting better, but we weren't exactly what we needed to be. But I felt like we were, after another off season, 
You know, we really had a chance to be, you know, where we needed to be offensive line wise. Um, we knew we had to go get another blocker at tight end. You know, if you remember at the end of last year, you know, we didn't have a tight end in the bowl game. You know, and we were playing with one, you know, like, and so that was a struggle. So we knew we needed, you know, to kind of build some blocking depth in that room. Um, you know, we had some issues at wide out. You know, we were just trying to trying to get to the finish line with those issues. Um, and then uh, – and we need to be more consistent there. And from a running back perspective, even though Letty got up a lot of our carries, we kind of knew – we felt good. You know, obviously CJ's been a surprise. But um, but we thought we were going to be fine there. So um, – and we need and we needed to be more consistent at quarterback, you know. And so, those defensively, as we go through here, um, you know, I think injuries have been a factor. You know, injuries have been a factor. Um, we've got to build our depth at linebacker. You know, uh, some of our guys are having to play too many snaps. We do know that. And then secondary wise, you know, like we've got to build that, and it's got to be a mix of young and some older. And you know, and so, um, but they're. It, it you can fix it easier than you could in the past too. I mean that's kind of, you know there's a give and take at everything. So you can fix things kind of kind of quicker than you could in the past as well. Um, but the roster building is you know and you're basically and and I've said this in a number of different ways is you're building teams you know more so it's more of the basketball model where you're kind of building teams um, rather than you know four and five year planning like it used to be. I don't know if I answered kind of kind of beat around there. Okay, all right, thank you all.